good morning today is the last class uh, i believe at least my last class so today i'll talk about drugs that are used in the urinary system so the function of the unit as we uh, functional unit of the kidney is nephron which is the basic unit my uh, kind of a filter this may say वाटर जो है प्लाज्मा हमारी बॉडी से निकल के उससे पास होके इट गेट्स फिल्टर्ड एंड यूरिन इज फॉर्म द प्रोसेस ऑफ यूरिन फॉर्मेशन स्टार्ट्स एट ग्लोमेरुलस व्हिच इज द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द नेफ्रॉन इन अ डे अबाउट 180 लीटर्स ऑफ फ्लूइड इज फिल्टर्ड इन द किडनीज एंड मोर देन 99% ऑफ द फिल्ट्रेट इज रीअब्सॉर्ब बाय द बॉडी ओनली 1% डज नॉट गेट रीअब्सॉर्ब so approximately 1.8 liters of urine is produced by our body in a day uh, the mechanism involves in uh, the ion movements across the tubular cells of the nephron as uh, are the results of the interplay between various energy dependent and indi- uh, independent independent pumps in ion channels and various physiological factors to jo bhi hamare ब्लड जो है हमारे नेफ्रॉन्स के थ्रू पास करके जाता है उसमें अलग अलग चैनल्स होते हैं जिसमें आयन और नॉन आयन डिपेंडेंट फिल्टर्स होते हैं बेस्ड ऑन दैट द रिक्वायर्ड थिंग्स गेट फिल्टर्ड आउट और दे गेट री एब्जॉर्ब एंड देन यूर इन्फॉर्मेशन टेक्स प्लेस फॉर एग्जाम्पल द ग्लोमेर फिल्ट्रेशन रेट डिपेंड्स अपॉन पम्पिंग एक्शन ऑफ द हार्ट रीनल ब्लड फ्लो एंड एक्शन ऑफ ह्यूमरल फैक्टर्स लाइक रेनल एंजियोटेंस इन एल्ट्रस्टर सिस्टम नोन एज रास सिस्टम the image is not visible in the document so the term is first uh, drugs that we will talk about will be diuretics so what are diuretics these are the agents which increase the rate of unit formation by the kidneys or which cause a net loss of sodium and water in the urine that is diuretics increase the urine output of ions and fluids of the kidney सो डायरेक्टिक्स इनमें से क्या होता है ज्यादा यूरिन फॉर्मेशन होगा ज्यादा यूरिन होगा तो उसमें सोडियम भी ज्यादा निकलेगा इसकी वजह से देर इज अ लॉस ऑफ सोडियम एंड वाटर इन द यूरिन इसीलिए जो हाइपरटेंसिव केसेस होते हैं या किसी को एकदम से हाइपरटेंशन हाइपरटेंसिव इमरजेंसी होती है तो उनको डायोबेटिक्स देते हैं हम लोग ताकि यूरिन फॉर्मेशन हो बॉडी से सोडियम कम हो एंड दैट विल लीड टू डिक्रीज इन ब्लड प्रेशर जैसे कि लेसेक्स हम लोग कहते हैं to give in emergency we will read about it clinically diuretics are the most widely prescribed drugs used in the management of hypertension see is there congestive heart failure and nephritic edema and in some cases of edema in the pregnancy also the important diuretics are benzothiazides and related compounds the main action of this class of drugs is excrete uh, is exerted on early segment of the distal tube of cortical diluting segment ऊपर इसमें इमेज अवेलेबल नहीं है अदरवाइज मैं आपको उसमें दिखाता कि वेयर डू दीज एक्ट दे इनहिबिट रीअब्जॉर्बशन ऑफ सोडियम एंड क्लोराइड तो जो सोडियम और क्लोरीन का जो रीअब्जॉर्बशन होता है उसको रोकते हैं अब वो रीअब्जॉर्बशन नहीं होगा तो वो यूरिन में ही रहेगा एंड इट विल बी रिमूव आउट ऑफ द बॉडी फ्रॉम थ्रू यूरिन एज अ रिजल्ट द एब्जॉर्बशन ऑफ वाटर एंड इलेक्ट्रोलाइट्स इज इनिबिटेड लीडिंग टू डाइरिस इनक्रीज दैट इज इनक्रीज इन फॉर्मेशन ऑफ यूरिन due to their action on blood vessels and on sodium metabolism they produce a mild hypotension therefore these drugs are used in treatment of edema hypotension and diabetes insipidus then high ceiling or loop diuretics again there is a uh, part of a nephron known as loop of nephron to us pe jo act karenge Uh, these are those group of drugs these are the best agents available for inducing marked water and electrolyte excretion these drugs is group include furosemide like i said furosemide or market mein hum lasix isko ya clinically hum log isko lasix ke naam se bahut zyada jante hain then bumetanidine and ethacrylic acid the main action of this is the loop of henle jo hamare nephron ka hota hai thus they are often called as loop diuretics 
they act primarily by inhibiting the electrolyte reabsorption in the thick ascending limb of loop of Hanley. The high ceiling diuretics are effective for the treatment of edema of cardiac uh, uh, or hepatic renal or, uh, hepatic or renal origin. These are the drug of choice in case of congestive heart failure. They are also forced diuresis in case of poisoning. Then carbotic anhydrase inhibitors, it is a potent non-competitive reversible inhibitor of enzyme known as carbonic anhydrase. They increase the tubular absorption of sodium in the proximal tube and in the distal tube. As a result the, uh, of the enzyme inhibition, the ability of the nephron is conserving sodium and uh, water. It gets reduced, so uh, it is not conserved in the body and it passes out in the urine. They are mainly used in the case of in the management of man, uh, glaucoma. Then there are some potassium sparing diuretics like triamterene and amiodron are non steroidal potassium sparing diuretics. They slightly increase sodium absorption. Spironolactone is a steroid and aldosterone is an antagonist. These drugs are generally combined with other potent diuretics to prevent excessive excretion of potassium in exchange for sodium absorption in the distal tubes. So, what will body from our body? Sodium will be more out and we will retain potassium in our body. Next is osmotic diuretics. Uh, these are non-electrolytes freely filterable at the glomerulus undergo limited reabsorption by the renal tubes. The primary effect of osmotic diuretics involved as increased fluid loss caused by retention of water in the renal tubules, which cannot be reabsorbed due to osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure is that it will reabsorption nahi hoga and urine formation will be more. This results in reduced reabsorption of sodium and water in proximal tubes and leads to diuresis. Then there are organic mercurials. In earlier 20s, these agents were known as diuretics of the choice. But after the introduction of the thiazides or loop diuretics, the organomercurials have become almost replaced. So we studied about diuretics. Now the antidiuretics, that is reversal of diuretics. As the name suggests, antidiuretics reduce urine volume and are used in treatment of diabetes insipidus. Antidiuretic hormone and analogs are vasopressin and desmopressin. Thiazide diuretics are hydrochlorothiazide. Antidiuretic hormones and their analogs. The antidiuretic hormone ADH or vasopressin is an octapeptide released from posterior lobe of pituitary gland. It acts on collecting ducts to increase their water permeability. जो हमारे nephron में जो collecting ducts होती हैं, ये उसपे काम करता है और उसकी permeability बढ़ा देता है. Permeability बढ़ने से water का जो reabsorption है, वो ज़्यादा हो जाएगा. तो urine की quantity कम हो जाएगी and blood में जो है water जो है वापस आ जाएगा. It acts as uh, acts on receptors in collecting duct and regulate their water permeability. ADH in larger doses increases blood pressure by direct stimulation of uh, vascular smooth muscles it can be administered by parental route or by nasal spray it is indicated in case of diabetes insipidus and treatment of post operative abdominal varices desmopressin it is a, an analog of vasopressin it is more stable than vasopressin and this is reflected in prolonged duration of action as compared to a vasopressin it increases permeability of the collecting ducts and tubules thereby enhancing water reabsorption and reducing the volume of urine. That is it. Only two types of drugs, diuretics and antidiuretics. Diuretics, they help in uh, making more of urine and um, help in removal of sodium from a uh, blood, thereby re reducing blood pressure acts upon various part of nephron which is the basic unit of a kidney and antidiuretics they act opposite to diuretics they help in retention of water and sodium so decreasing the urine output helps in increasing the blood pressure
Now, uh, the next topic is autocoids. So, autocoid is derived from the Greek word autos. Autos matlab apne aap. Coid echoes matlab remedy. So, these are formed in various tissues of the body and generally act locally at the site of synthesis and release or at the site of release in the body. They have been called as local hormones and differ from hormones which are secreted from endocrine glands. The hormones, these are produced by specific cells called endocrine glands and transported through circulation at distant organ by autocoids are produced in tissue rather than in glands. So, in our body mein, there are certain endocrine glands where hormones produce hota hai, wo blood mein jata hai, and then they act upon at other side. But what are the autocoids? Where they are made or release hote hai, wahin par hi they act. They do not uh, go and act upon some different side. So the important autocoids are histamines, hydroxytryptamine or 5-HT or also known as serotonin, then prostaglandins, then leukotrienes and kinins. Histamine is a potent biogenic amine which occurs in tissues in almost all forms of life and released in free state in response to any injury or any antigen body reaction. Histamine is formed by decarboxylation of amino acid known as L-histidine, a reaction catalyzed by enzyme known as histidine carboxylase. It is found in most tissues present in various biological fluids. Uh, these mast cells are especially rich in site of potential energy that is skin, lungs and GIT and are evenly distributed. So basically what uh, it is present in the venoms of bees and wasps. When we uh, they bite or they give us a sting, so our body mein jo hai, ye histamines release karte hai. तो जिसकी वजह से जो होता है एक एलर्जिक रिएक्शन होता है आपने इफ यू ऑब्जर्व अर्टिक एरिया हो जाता है या इचिंग होने लग जाती है या रैशेस पड़ जाते हैं तो दैट इज बिकॉज़ ऑफ द इफेक्ट ऑफ हिस्टामिन द प्रेजेंट एविडेंस इंडिकेट दैट हिस्टामिन मेनली एक्ट ऑन टू टाइप्स ऑफ रिसेप्टर्स नेमली एच1 एंड एच2 नाउ इन हिस्टामिन्स के लिए हम क्या यूज करेंगे एंटी हिस्टामिनिक एजेंट्स मोस्ट ऑफ द एंटी हिस्टामिनिक्स ये क्या करते हैं जो कि हमने बात करी H1 एंड H2 रिसेप्टर्स ये मोस्ट ऑफ द एंटीहिस्टामिनिक्स दे H1 रिसेप्टर को रोकते हैं उसके एंटागोनिस्ट होते हैं दे हैव सिमिलर फार्माकोलॉजिकल एक्शन एंड कन्वेंशनली कैन बी डिस्कस्ड लेटर सी दे एंटागोनाइज द स्टिमुलेंट एक्शन ऑफ हिस्टामिन ऑन वेरियस स्मूथ मसल्स ऑफ रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम गैस्ट्रोइंटेस्टिनल ट्रैक्ट एंड यूट्रस एंड ब्लड वेसल्स So what are first generation antihistaminics? Majority of antihistaminics first generation are diphenyl, heteramine, phenaramine, maleate, promethazine and cyclizine. They produce various degree of CNS depression that is sedation, drowsiness and sleepiness. Just like we talk about cetrazine, levocetrazine, chlorpherinamine, maleate, these are the things. Okay, now you all know that सेट्रेजन लेने से नींद आती है, सिडेशन होती है, ड्राउजीनेस होती है, तो दिस इज़ द सेम थिंग। एंटीमेस्टर में क्या है वाइट स्प्रेड यूज़ वैल्यू इन सिम्प्टोमेटिक ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ़ वेरियस डिसऑर्डर्स, सम इम्पोर्टेंट थेरेमेटिक यूज़ेस ऑफ़ दिस क्लास ऑफ़ ड्रग्स इज़ एस फॉलोस Hyper sensitivity reaction like I said to prevent allergic reaction or to treat their symptoms in which histamine is the primary mediator. They are used primarily to treat any allergic reaction produced by the release of histamines, uh, which cause pruritus, allergic rhinitis, urtic area. These are more effective in acute conditions and are used only for symptomatic relief. Then they can be used in motion sickness like promethazine. Uh, ulti ke liye, uh, jo hum use karte hai, that is promethazine. Then anti-parkinsonism may jo hum use karte hai, anti-cholinergic property ke liye, which blocks H1, uh, which acts as H1 antagonist, that is diphenyl hydramine. 
then they can be used as local anesthetics uh, like procain the antihistaminic diphenylhydramine have been used successfully as local anesthetics ye to the first generation of antihistaminics next is newer generation these are the agent which do not produce much sedation uh, as side effects and are termed as second generation histaminics so this is like cetirizine cetirizine is a potent antihistaminic which has a low potential for drowsiness at pharmacologically uh, and active doses with additional anti allergic properties Here again it is a h1 antagonist it is indicated for symptomatic treatment of perineal allergic reactions allergic rhinitis seasonal allergic rhinitis chronic urticaria conjunctivitis pruritus in adults and children above 2 years of age then there is fexofenadine jisko hum allegra ke naam se most commonly use karte hain agar brand name ki baat kare it is non sedating antihistaminic neend nahi dilata hai which against selective peripheral h1 receptor antagonist hai uh, no sedative or other cns effect were observed now some of the h2 antagonist as discussed as to uh, earlier h2 receptors are responsible for this uh, gastric acid secretion so uh, h2 receptor antagonist are cimetidine ranitidine and fomotidine ranitidine hum log jante hain hame usme help karta hai acid acute peptic disease jab acidity bahut zyada hoti hai usme hum log isko use karte hain so in that case uh, it would have been discovered in anti ulcer drugs then serotonin and its anti uh, antagonist 5 hydroxy tryptamine or serotonin it is known as 5 ht which is widely distributed in plant and animal tissue mast cell platelet uh, entrocomorphin cells and throughout the gi tract some fruits like bananas pineapple tomatoes and plums also contain considerable amount of 5 ht it can directly stimulate or relax smooth muscles and can influence release of non adrenaline from adrenergic nerves and stimulate endothelial cells it increases the motility of small intestine stomach and also large intestine by which peristalsis is increased and diarrhea can occur so kya hota hai jaise hum log agar ek ko lete to hamare gi tract mein peristalsis karata hai peristalsis is like uh, stomach ka jo uh, intestines ka jo movement hota rehta hai jiski wajah se food hamare aage ki taraf badhta hai to agar iska movement zyada hoga to uh, irritation zyada hogi iska movement zyada hoga to stool formation zyada hogi and it will be uh, it will lead to diarrhea like condition तो इसके एंटागोनिस्ट कौन से हो गए हैं मेनी ऑफ द ड्रग्स आर पार्शियल एंटागोनिस्ट और एंटागोनाइज सर्टेन एक्शन ऑफ फाइव एच टी बट सिमुलेट अदर्स द टू ड्रग्स दैट आर यूजली क्लासिफाइड एज फाइव एच टी एंटागोनिस्ट आर मेथीसरजाइड एंड सिप्रोहेप्टीन मेथीसरजाइड इट एंटागोनाइज द बेसो कंस्ट्रक्टर एंड प्रेसर इफेक्ट ऑफ फाइव एच टी एज वेल एज एक्शन ऑफ अमीन ऑन वेरियस एक्स्ट्रा वेस्कुलर स्मूथ मसल्स it has been used in migraine prophylaxis vascular headaches to combat diarrhea and malabsorption of the carcinoid patients next is ciproheptadine it increases the appetite bachcho mein agar patient ke bolte hain ki ji bachche khana nahi khata hai bhook kam lagti hai to unko hum log ciproheptadine ka syrup dete hain it increases the appetite and promotes weight gain it is used in controlling the intestinal malfunction and carcinoid and uh, post gastrectomy dumpling syndrome then ketanserin it blocks 5 ht reduces vaso constriction platelet aggregation and contraction of both airway smooth muscles next is prostaglandins uh, these are biologically active derivatives of 20 carbon atom polyunsaturated fatty acids which contain 3 4 5 double bonds no need to know this 
So what are the actions of prostaglandins? Uterine smooth muscles in pregnant women are uniformly contracted by the prostaglandins PG uh, I1 and PG E2 produce these cause relaxations while non-pregnant human uterus are contracted by PGFs but relaxed by PGEs. Bronchial muscle may bronchial and tracheal muscles are contracted by PGFs and PGD2 and relaxed by PGE. Asthmatic patients are sensitive to PG2F2 alpha. GI tract pe jo hai, longitudinal muscle is contracted by PGE2 and PG2F alpha. Mm. Cardiovascular system pe, they are potent vasodilators. Jo mari vessels hai, unka wo dilatation karayenge. Endocrine system, systematic administration of PG2 increases circulating concentration of ACTH, growth hormone, prolactin and gonadotrophins. In ka use kya hota hai? They are used as abortifacient. Intra-amniotic administration of PGF2 alpha produces abortion with less severe side effects. It is used to induce second trimester abortion and usually administered as a single milligram intra-amniotic injection. Synthetic jo hote hai, these are used as suppositories or absorption, uh, abortion. Then they are also used for induction of labor. They do not have advantage over oxytocin for induction of labor. First thing that is used is oxytocin only. The adverse effect of prostaglandins are for slightly higher than that produced by uh, oxytocin. Then they are used in uh, peripheral vascular diseases. Infusion of intra-arterial injection of prostacycline PGI2 improves potency of blood vessels in certain peripheral vascular diseases. Respiratory system, it is a powerful bronchodilator which gives aero, uh, when given in aerosol. Thus, uh, but due to the irritant action of bronchial uh, mucosa, its clinical utility is limited. Renal system may PGE1, E2, PGI2, they increase glomerular filtration through their vasodilatory effect and increase water and sodium excretion. Gastric ulcers may uh, karte hai, they have been found to promote healing in gastric ulcer. They are cypro cytoprotective at low doses and inhibit gastric acid secretion at higher doses. PGE1 alparostadil is being used as IV infusion in infants with congenital heart defects. Some of the prostaglandin analogs used in clinically are mesoprostol, rioprostol, inolprostol, arboprostol, and so on. So that was all in case of corticoids. Last topic is drugs acting on respiratory system. Then we'll carry on.
So, uh, coming back to our last topic, the drugs acting on the respiratory system. So, drugs used in case of cough. Drug is a protective reflex which helps in expulsion of respiratory secretions of foreign particles which are irritant to the respiratory tract. Koi agent jo irritant ki tarah act respiratory system ko, it causes cough. Irritation to any part of respiratory tract starting from pharynx to lungs carried impulses by uh, efferent fibers in vagus sympathetic nerve to cuff center in the medulla oblongata. The cuff may be dry, that is there may be no, there may be no sputum or it is known as unproductive or it is productive with the sputum production. There are certain factors which are responsible for production of cuff. These can be environmental factors like pollutants, just like uh, grass cutting or crop cutting, it can act as an irritant, then it can be dust, it can be smoke, 
or the atom automobile smoke then there can be infections of upper respiratory tract there can be acute lung infections asthma and certain diseases like pleural effusion then there can be chronic pulmonary ailments like tuberculosis chronic bronchitis and allergic cancer or it uh, drugs that can induce cough like ace inhibitors then uh, pharyngeal demulcents these are the agents which are generally administered in the form of lozenges or cough drops and cough linkers they produce soothing effect on the throat directly by acting uh, by increasing the flow of saliva and provide symptomatic relief from the dry cough then there are expectorant these are the drugs which increase production of bronchial secretion and reduce its viscosity to facilitate its removal by coughing expectorants can stimulate the expulsion of respiratory secretions either directly or by the reflex uh, the type of uh, uh, second type of reflex is uh, reflex expect expectorant which acts by stimulating the gastric reflexes which increase the respiratory secretions certain salts which are used in emetics which are used in sub emetic dose increase the bronchial secretion and expel it out which are known as saline expectorants then there are ammonium salts as chlorides and carbonates are gastric irritants in nature and they reflexly increases the bronchial secretion thereby help in expectoration potassium salts as iodide act by both direct action and reflexly to increase the respiratory secretion and decrease its viscosity thus they are easy to expel out it um, then there are sodium and potassium citrate and acetate that act by increasing bronchial secretions by their salt actions certain alkaloids such as biskin are obtained from plants uh, bromhexene a derivative of skin d polymers another compound was acetylcysteine is obtained from disulfide bonds in mucoproteins present in sputum and carbocysteine acts in the similar manner then there are antitussives antitussives kinhe kehte hain jo ki which are cough suppressants and act to raise the threshold of cough and inhibit the cough reflex by sub suppressing the coordinating cough center in medulla oblongata antitussives kaun se hote hain codeine folcodeine nescopine dextromethorphan and pipazithate it is an opium alkaloid like most commonly used in uh, as antitussive and is more selective for cough center it is similar to codeine in efficacy and is longer acting it is another opium alkaloid of benzyl uh, lysoquinoline group uh, it is contraindicated in asthma patient as it releases histamine which can cause bronchoconstriction jaise ki humne padha tha piche wasp ke andar histamines hote hain and they cause allergic reaction and uh, so bronchial asthma ke case mein bhi it releases histamine to us wajah se jo hai it can act as allergic reaction and condition can get worse is extramethorphan is a synthetic compound as is used as antitussive is as effective as codeine without any addition addiction liability codeine is misused also for drug by drug users pipazithate is another synthetic compound used as antitussive with little analgesic and sedative properties antihistamines most h1 antihistamines have been added to antitussives or expectorant formation they do not act on cough center but provide relief due to their sedative and anticholinergic action jaise ki ek chlorpherinamine maliate humne usme maliate ke bare mein padha tha the most common is chlorpherinamine maliate which is antihistamine added as uh, to these cough syrups then there are bronchodilators which help in individuals with cough and bronchoconstriction तो जिनमें ब्रोंको कंस्ट्रक्शन होगी उनमें वील गिव दिस सो दैट द ब्रोंकियल हाइपर रिएक्टिविटी को जो है वो कम कर सके ड्यू टू ब्रोंकियल डायलिटेशन द 
then anti asthmatic drugs asthma is disease characterized by increased responsiveness of trachea and bronchi to a variety of stimuli um, the impairment of air flow in asthma is caused by three abnormalities that is construction of bronchial smooth muscles swelling of bronchial mucosa or excessive bronchial secretions sympathomimetics beta antagonists are invariably used in symptomatic treatment of asthma epinephrine and ephedrine are structurally related to catecholamine norepinephrine a neurotransmitter in the adrenergic nervous system isme agar hum main baat kare to salbutamol is the highly effective beta adrenergic stimulant with having a potent bronchodilator action most commonly hum log asthma ke cases mein salbutamol hi dete hain it is given orally as well as inhalation route by nebulizer palpitation restlessness nervousness are common side effects with salbutamol apart from that we can give terbutalin which is similar to salbutamol and is administered by oral parenteral or as well as inhalation route then there is salmitrol is uh, it is a kind of newer long acting uh, beta adrenergic antagonist slow in onset of action so it is used as a maintenance therapy in asthma ekdam emergency ke liye nahi dete hain but usko maintenance therapy ke liye dete hain in cases of asthma methyl xanthines among the methyl xanthines aminophylline is the most commonly used drug in the treatment of bronchial asthma it is stable mixture of theophylline and ethyl anadamine then next is anticholinergics anticholinergics like atropine are derived from ipratopium bromide humne kal baat kari thi which can be used in case in bronchodilation in case of asthmatic cases they block cholinergic pathways that cause airway obstruction they may be provided added uh, they may provide added bronchial dilator effect in patients who are receiving beta 2 adrenergic agents for asthma then mast cell stabilizers these are important members in the group of sodium chromoglycate and ketotifen they are not beneficial in cases of acute asthma and are used for prophylaxis only ekdam se unka effect nahi aata hai uh, therefore they are not used in cases of acute attacks of asthma most uh, important therapeutic use of mast cell stabilizers is prophylaxis of bronchial asthma taki hum isko लॉन्ग टर्म में जो अगर रेगुलर कोई रूटीन डेली बेसिस पे अगर हमें यूज करना है तो हम उसको ब्रॉकेल एस्तमा के लिए हम लोग मास्टर स्टेबिलाईजर्स को यूज करेंगे बट नॉट इन केस ऑफ एनी एमरजेंसी then uh, corticosteroids like mast cell stabilizers corticosteroids corticosteroids do not relax airway smooth muscles directly but reduce bronchial activity increase airway caliber suppress inflammatory response to antigen antibody reaction or they trigger stimuli and also they reduce the frequency of asthma exacerbations systemic steroids are used in both severe chronic asthma and also in acute emergency of asthma that is acute emergency is known as status asthmaticus the inhaled steroids suppress asthma by topical anti inflammatory action without causing any systemic side effect they reduce bronchial hypersensitivity hyperactivity and also increase peak expiratory flow rate in case of asthmatic patients the side effects are sore throat hoarseness of voice voice dysphonia and oropharyngeal candidiasis then leukotriene pathways inhibitors apart from histamine leukotrienes deliberated during inflammation are most powerful bronchodilator and are also long acting bronchodilators in effect is long lasting they increase bronchial mucus secretion increase vascular permeability bronchial constriction and in uh, bronchial constriction and increase bronchial reactivity the drug montelukast and zafirlukast are available for treatment of asthmatic patients montelukast hum ne bahut commonly suna hai it's a leukotriene pathway inhibitor uh 
that was all in case of drugs of respiratory system in case anybody wants to ask anything all right then thank you so much